I've been researching prehistoric Southwest artifacts, specifically pottery, uh, for many decades. Today I just wanted to share some of these wonderful artifacts with you and some of the stories that they tell us and things that they reveal about the culture from the past. If you liked the video today, please give me a like, if you like. I wanted to talk today about the spirit break that's often painted on vessels, the kill hole that you usually see on Mimbre's material, and some of these other deliberate rim kills and different ways of releasing the spirit of the vessel, and some of the, spirit, uh, some of the uh, theory behind uh, this evidence. And I want to show you several artifacts today that exhibit uh, this characteristic, this feature, and we'll go over them one by one. It's not just found on pottery, it's found in architecture, it's found on, uh, in jewelry pieces, and many other forms. I'll get around the other side of the camera and we'll, we'll go over some of these pieces. Okay, the classic spirit break is this painted line that is broken. It's painted around the, the, the vessel somewhere, depends on whether the form of the vessel, but usually on oils it's around the top and it's a continuous line and then it's broken. In this case it has a couple of cloud units uh, terminate where it terminates. That's the spirit break of the vessel. It's supposedly to release the spirit of the vessel. Now this is a snowflake black on white. It dates around, it's early. This is like 1100. I'll put a caption date on that for you. Here's another one. Now this is a really, both of these actually are really nice these are Matsaki brown and buff, and I'm going to do a whole video about these two. These I have four of these. But here again, here's the spirit break. Here's the cloud, uh, terminates with the cloud. Line comes around the vessel. There's the break in that line. Here again, this is a beauty. Comes around, cloud units. Doesn't always have a cloud unit. Sometimes it's just a broken line. We find it very frequently on uh, Gila material. Gila polychromes almost always have that spirit break. And it, as the bowl, you see it's on the inside. There it is. There's a continuous line. There's the spirit break. Supposedly to release the spirit of the vessel. Now, in Membrae's material, you see that kill hole in the bottom. That's because Membrae's material uh, are, are burial, are funerary objects. Almost every Membrae's bowl you see, particularly if it's got a hole poked in the bottom, that is a... Uh, that's a deliberate kill after it's been placed over the head or the face of the deceased person. Now, I don't have a Membrae's vessel to show you, but I did find, believe it or not, I found a kill hole in the bottom of this big, great big Tonto polychrome bowl. There's the kill hole right in the bottom. I know, you know, there's a couple of other little pieces missing, but those are just missed in curation and excavation, but that's a kill hole. And this is not a Membrae's vessel, this is a Tonto. But this vessel, this big communal bowl, was deliberately killed at one point. And it's not a burial object either. This was found in a room, on the floor of a room. So it, it, the kill hole in the bottom of the vessel does happen in other uh, pottery types other than just Membrae's. Another form we see very frequently is the uh, deliberate rim kill. We see this a lot. This is where the vessels are deliberately broken at the rim. We've got three beautiful examples. These little bowls were all found together. Let me up here where you can see them. And you see these are all little heel polychromes. All have that piece missing. That's not a mistake. That's on purpose. That's a deliberate rim kill. Same thing, same idea. You break the vessel to release the spirit of the vessel. There's three perfect little examples right there. Now, another form is just the, the whole breaking of the vessel. They just break the vessel. This little bowl, we chase this around the site. We'd find a piece 100 yards, yards away from another piece. This was deliberately broken and smashed across the surface of the site. Uh, as a kill of the vessel. We see that a lot with four-mile polychromes. We see that deliberate breakage across the site, and it's not from other things that happened uh, in, the, in the prehistory. It's, it's, it's a deliberate kill. And this little gap, the spirit break idea, I, the, one of the most interesting ones that I discovered the other day in the artifact collections, the Raven Poly, and look at the outside design. There it goes, all the way around perfectly, and then, all of a sudden, 
Kaboom. There's the, there's the spirit. That's very cool. Now, that wasn't because the lady couldn't paint straight. That's because that's the spirit break on an exterior, very, very unusual form with that one. That's the spirit break of the vessel. Very cool. Now, another one we see it in, of course, is our famous tablettas. Our famous tabletta form. Two clouds, the rainbow, the sky serpent or lightning, and this big house symbol. And what do you got? You got that doorway or passageway. Very similar to the spirit break. That's an emergence. Uh, very similar to the spirit break idea. And here we see it again. This is a little carved sandstone Pueblo. It's actually a key, three-story Kiva. Chaco, I believe, has one of these, uh, a real one. And you see these little doorways, these little T-shaped doorways. Same thing, same idea. You see them all over the Southwest, and there's all this speculation about why there were these T-shaped doorways. Well, it really looks like the spirit break idea. And I'm going to show you in slides, I'm going to add to this video, uh, you'll see some in jewelry pieces. Uh, you're going to see some in carved stone. The, the idea is all over the place. It's maybe two different things going on. This, this break may be very different than the spirit break on the vessels. But it's similar. The idea is very similar. We find these really frequently on the site. And here again, it's probably the spirit break representation. I've seen these stone, those stone slabs. I've seen these interpreted as turkey pen doors. Uh, down at, there's a site in northern uh, Mexico that they had a row of these and they called them turkey pen doors with this big disc in the front. And I guess that, I, I don't know what the source of that interpretation is, but I'm not sure that's really what these are. We found several on the site, so they had a, a pragmatic function. I don't, they're not toilet seats. Here we have the little jewelry pieces that are cut in this little T-shape again, and uh, that little spirit break idea. These little inlay jewelry pieces. And here it is in our famous Pueblo. Uh, this is like a three-story Kiva uh, carved sandstone representation. Uh, several, we found several of these, not three of these. A rancher brought this one in. Uh, and then this one, we discovered this one and one other one. They're always found with these other ceremonial pieces, these pipes incense burners, um, sensors they call them, these stone objects. We found these in a little group. Mm -hmm.